belong to the United Methodist Church, and I'm here with a few of my friends, actually a very large number of friends, to talk to you about a phrase that was added to our Book of Discipline in 1972. We do not condone the practice of homosexuality and consider this practice incompatible with Christian teaching. Incompatible with Christian teaching? Hey, Jesus Christ did not say that. John Wesley did not say that. It sounds judgmental. So how did that phrase get in there? Our history tells us that after a four-year study of homosexuality, a proposal was made at the General Conference in 1972 to add a statement to our Book of Discipline. Homosexuals, no less than heterosexuals, are persons of sacred worth who need the ministry and guidance of the Church in their struggles for human fulfillment, as well as the spiritual and emotional care of a fellowship which enables reconciling relationships with God, with others, and with self. Further, we insist that all persons are entitled to have their human and civil rights ensured. That sounds like what Jesus wants for us. That reminds me of Wesley's general rules. Do no harm, do all the good you can. But then a motion was made from the floor to add another part. We do not condone the practice of homosexuality and consider this practice incompatible with Christian teaching. So Jesus Christ did not say that. John Wesley did not say that. But some people at our general conference in 1972 said that. But why? Didn't they know it would hurt our families? Didn't they know that those words would be used to harm individuals? The Book of Discipline isn't permanent, though. How can United Methodists make a better decision? Our Wesleyan tradition of considering scripture, tradition, reason, and experience can help. In scripture, Christ told us that the greatest commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. So the focus of Christian teaching is love. We have lots of friends who love God with all their heart and who love and serve their neighbors. They serve meals in our community. They repair homes for those in need. Wait, are some of those hands gay? I can't tell. Does it matter? Our friends care for those who are sick or lonely. They assemble supplies for the United Methodist Committee on Relief and for the local food bank. And they worship regularly. Our traditions say to do no harm, do all the good you can, and attend to the ordinances of God. And we practice all of those things. Our church works hard at putting those words into action. But if you're gay, somebody from 1972 says you're incompatible. So much for do no harm. But, but we, we can, can change it. it. So what about the rules in the older sections of the Bible, like Leviticus? Are we rationalizing or ignoring those parts of the Bible? Hey dudes, I caught these clams last week when we were by the sea. Do you think they're good to eat? Are you crazy? Eating shellfish is an abomination. If you eat those things, our caravan is going to have to make a rest stop every 20 minutes. So much for do no harm. So much for love your neighbor. Our ability to reason tells us that context matters. Some rules from the past had good reasons back then, but aren't necessary in today's world. Hey, I have a problem with my under tunic. I, I attached some wool to the linen and now it's making it all bunchy. You have a whole sheep's worth of wool. Are you going to waste that? And where are you going to find time to sew a new tunic? I could skip worship. So much for attending to God's ordinances. Those older days had no refrigeration, no laundry machines, and some of the nearby civilizations were practicing pagan worship with idols and orgies. Hey dude, the city by the sea is having a party tonight with lots of sex. Sex with women, sex with men, sex with... I don't think they care who or what they have sex with. So much for do all the good you can. Oh no! Sexuality is God's good gift to all persons. Sex is supposed to be special. Our Book of Discipline says that sexuality is part of the natural order and is God's good gift to all. Sex must not be used to hurt people. Treating sex like it isn't a gift from God through indiscriminate sex that pays no attention to our bodies or our genders is hurtful. No wonder the Bible said don't do these things. 
Our ability to reason also tells us that sexual orientation doesn't make any difference in how we worship or how we serve God. So we have talked about scripture and reason and tradition, but what does our experience tell us? My experience tells me that we must stand together against rape, sexual trafficking, sexual abuse, sex that exploits men, women, or children, sex that is used to hurt others, including ourselves. But none of these ways that sex is used to hurt people is tied to sexual orientation. None of them. My experience tells me that discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation is using sexuality to hurt people. And my experience tells me that Christian love is shared by people of all shapes and colors and orientations. Excluding families that have same-sex marriages or partnerships is hurtful. It needs to stop. My experience tells me that we should love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God, and there is no fear in love. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And my experience tells me that the words added to the Book of Discipline about homosexuality are themselves against Christian teaching. Christ did not teach these words. John Wesley did not teach these words. These words are inconsistent with Wesley's rule to do no harm. These words are inconsistent with Christ's teaching to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. These added words must be retracted. We believe that God's revelations continue today. God is acting in our lives. Are you open to it?